4. Consonance and Dissonance What makes some sounds dissonant? Is dissonance a property of sounds themselves, or is it part of our perception of sound? Throughout history, many attempts have been made to model dissonance. Early models dating back 2,500 years to ancient Greece and China were geometric in nature. That is, they considered musical intervals as ratios of two string lengths and showed that certain kinds of ratios were associated with consonant intervals and others with dissonant ones. Today, our models of consonance and dissonance also take into account our understanding of the anatomy and functioning of the inner ear, particularly the basilar membrane, as well as the ways in which temporal fluctuations associated with the perception of dissonance are encoded and transmitted along the auditory nerve and in the inferior colliculus. Further, we are able to say that certain high-level cognitive processes can override lower-level sensation, producing judgments of consonance or dissonance that can contradict both physical and anatomical sensation. Taken together, these different perspectives comprise our current models of consonance and dissonance. 5. Pitch, Intervals and Key Areas Some sounds have an identifiable characteristic that we refer to as its pitch. But what exactly do we mean by that? And why do some sounds have this property while others don't?